Hey, my name is Nabil. Today we're at Sophie's Cuban. This is one of our customers, and this is the only Lunchbox customer that has a Lunchbox tattoo on his arm. We heard it's his birthday as well, so we're here with a surprise to visit the staple of New York. They've been around for 25 years. They have the best green sauce in the business, so let's check them out. My name is George Sestero. Uh, I am the tech director with Sophie's Cuban. I've been in the company for about 13 years now. Uh, Sophie's Cuban is a mom and pop shop um, serving Cuban food in, uh, for lunch uh, in a pinch. We've been around for 25 years and uh, yeah, we just our mission is to just be able to provide real quality food and get you in and out in, you know, in a heartbeat. And I, I hear, uh, and when's your birthday? Uh, it just passed, it was uh, September 11th. September 11th, all yes. right, all right. Yes. So. I don't know. I feel like we knew that. I feel like we have something. Oh, no. I feel like, I feel oh, like we no. have that information and we have something <laughs> for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so. Uh, wow. We're thinking about what to get you. Okay. <laughs> and we did not, you know, we were struggling, okay. right? But then we realized, like, why not get one of my favorite moments here at Lunchbox? Okay. So, <laughs> there you go. Wow. There you go. Happy birthday. Oh Let's show this to the camera. That is some, that is some really rad art that I got in Chicago at this food service show. And um, it is a decked out mushroom from your design team. And I have a mushroom patch on my arm already. And I thought that I'm all in. Let's do it. You're the only Lunchbox customer who has a Lunchbox tattoo on their arm. Nice. I feel like that's, I feel like that's, an, I feel hey, like listen. we owe you money. <laughs> I feel like I give you royalties hey, or something. I believe in the product, man, and I believe in the people, so Thank I'm you. there. So let's talk a little bit about what do you guys offer here at Sophie's Cuban? So you'll find uh, everything for from lunch to dinner here. Um, we offer legumes, black beans, we have red beans in our arroz moro. And moro basically is just a, a blend of white rice cooked with seasoning and the red beans. Um, we have sandwiches, we have our famous Cuban spicy chicken sandwich you see here. You guys have been here for 25 years in New York. Yeah. That is special in itself. Nothing lasts in New York that long. Yeah. Especially restaurants, they recycle so quickly. Absolutely. Why do you think you have survived so long in New York? Almost all of that is a testament to our founder, Manuela Matos. She started this company coming from Peru, an immigrant. She left her kids home, back home, you know, because she wanted to create something better for them. And that drive, that determination, it translates to her daughters. It translates to everybody that, that puts on Sophie's uniform and it's contagious, it's infectious. It's yeah. a will to just be successful and provide something great for the community. You know? it, it feels like a family. Your GM's back there. She's taking like yeah, yeah. 50 photos of you yeah, already. Yeah. It feels it, like you guys it really are in this together. It's a very close group, absolutely. I love that there's so much history and tradition in this restaurant and, and everything you guys have put together. Mm -hmm. And then you add technology, you add Lunchbox. How'd you decide to not only uh, make a decision to pick Lunchbox, but how did you make sure it doesn't interrupt everything else you have built here? Uh, we had Simmer Group, which is an amazing branding agency. Um, Juliana Pesavento was working lead with me, and she heard about you guys from a uh, friend. And she, she was able to meet, uh, set up a meet. And just from there, everything that I spoke about prior, whether it be the passion, whether it be the mission, I felt like Lunchbox was so uh, on the same page with us there. Uh, once I had a few meetings with yourself, obviously with everybody else in the team, I, it just kept on growing and growing. And there's, I think it's just because of the similar backgrounds. It's just, we're hungry, we're both hungry. We, we, we wanna, you guys wanna help the people that are feeding people, you know, and we, we wanna feed people. So combined, I think we're pretty powerful. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know, you know we were sp uh, speaking off camera and you've been here for 13 years. I was at my last job as a restaurateur for a decade. You li I lived in Astoria, you live in LIC. So uh, I love how much we have in common and it's easier to, build a tech company for food people when you've, you're a food person yourself. So just sitting here, spending time with you, hanging out with you off camera while we were putting this together, uh, it just feels home. Yeah, man. Yeah. We try to create that atmosphere, uh, no matter what the location is, no matter what the situation is, you know? It's, um, we, try to, we try to be about that, so that the culture's there and our, and our teammates see that. Tell me about the green sauce, what's happening? Why oh. is uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of addicts yeah, it's running a, it's around a funny story. looking for it? It's a really funny story with the green sauce. The, uh, the ingredients that are found in a traditional green sauce in Peru are not really available here, especially not back in the 90s when they, when they first rolled out. So they ended up grabbing a bunch of jalapenos instead of using this, um, it's, called, it's called ají verde, I think. And it's basically just, um, they mix black, black mint with this green pepper and it kind of gives it a similar look. But again, 
being that they didn't have those ingredients, they just ended up using jalapenos. And for, for whatever reason, no matter what you put this sauce on, it just tastes incredible. It doesn't matter if, if it's from, if the food's from Sopas or not. It's just, it goes great on everything. I've tried it on pizzas, heroes, yeah. epan I mean, honestly, epanadas. And uh, yeah, it goes great on everything. And there's only seven ingredients, you know? Oh, wow. So, yeah. I love it. You know, we have some restaurant groups that are very much part of the community and the community loves and supports it back. Uh, how have you guys been able to build that with your local community? Even this location here, yeah. there's so many people who are passing by, they all know you, they all you know, were telling you to take a picture of the photo from this angle. How have you guys built that community here? I think it's just about being genuine. You should always hire for attitude and not just skill, you know? And, um, that, and that goes with everybody in Sophie's. So if, you, if you're just genuine in what you do, I think people will respond to that more. And then, um, being that we, we were not the best markers before, now that we're able to reach the community through social media and you know email campaigns and whatnot, now we're starting to uh, branch out with um, other services in the area, people that help kids in need. And you know, it's new to us, because it's something we haven't been able to do in the past, wow. yeah. but we're excited to start getting more involved. You mentioned uh, email campaigns. Any of it, are you using Lunchbox for any of it? Because one of my big thing is, I don't want to just build an online ordering company, I want to build a company that helps you speak to people. Are we enabling you or helping you speak to your guests? Yeah, I've, I've got the training background in customer I.O. Uh, it's a great suite, it has a bunch of parameters and features that are amazing. Um, some that I still need to learn, obviously, definitely. But yeah, I think the product is great. We did the mini, we did the mini up and auto release with, with, the, with promos, and we had, like, we had some great numbers, you know, great click rate, great open rate. So definitely, yeah. Uh, George, uh, would love to spend some time talking about the origin story. Yeah. I feel like you guys have a superhero origin story. It yeah. could be a movie of itself. Yeah. And I'd love to hear a little bit about the card. Uh, I would love to hear a little bit about more about Queens, my my hometown. So yeah. take us through the origin story. Yeah. So back in Flushing Meadows. Um, when Mawala first got here, she basically would prep in her kitchens all day, you know? Uh, as soon as kids got home, they would all go out to the soccer fields in Flushing Meadows. And just any soccer players that had finished the game, that wanted to eat some food, that wanted some good Peruvian cuisine, they knew where to go, you know? So Mawala, she was uh, super disciplined, su super determined, and she- So she was selling out of a cart? Yeah. She had yeah. A, and how big was this cart? I mean, like your typical icy cart, you know It's I mean? not, it's, so it's not a big, it's no, like this no, small? No, yeah, just, just enough to be able wow. to be mobile and to keep on moving, you know? And, and what happened, like, she's like, one day she woke up, she said, like, I'm going to, like, when well, did that, that inception happen? Even back in Peru, uh, the Luna family has been working in food service since the 50s. Wow. Yeah, uh, Mawela's mother started a, uh, a food service, I'm sorry, um, they call them mercaditos. It's like little markets, right? Okay. And there's you can you can find stuff from a pharmacy or food, and then wow. everything in between, you know. So um, they they started there. Um, she grew up always peeling potatoes. She was always a, she was always working in food service. Yeah. So she had that in, in throughout the hope. The only thing is that um, coming to New York, or coming to the states, she wasn't so sure that Cuban food was the right. Um, cuisine. Uh, she didn't they, know there was a market for it. Yeah, exactly. There wasn't really, at that time it wasn't now, it's like, you know what it is now. Right. So she had basically um, put out an ad in a newspaper. Uh, here look, in, looking for, here look, in Queens. Yeah, look, looking for, look, Queens and the city, just looking for um, cooks. Just, just cooks that had Cuban influence. Um, and as soon as her daughter was old enough, they, they put up the search together. They put their funds together. They opened up one shop down on Greenwich Street. Wow. And that place, you can imagine the Wall Street crowd back then in the 90s. By the time Greenwich opened, how many years of the cart business has been happening? I think it only took her about three years. Three years of yeah. you know uh, selling in Flushing, selling Corona, I bet, yeah. in the neighboring areas. Yeah. And then three years saving up money, she's opening this location in Greenwich, yep. in the city. Yep. That's, just like that. She that's didn't even, scary. She didn't even, she didn't even start in Queens. Just wow. to, yep, she went straight. She knew, she knew what her, her demographic was. She knew what she was trying to target. Um, so the rest is history, man. I mean, that place was so busy. They, they would, they would sell out like just after the lunch rush. We have a lot of customers. Yeah. Uh, we have some, a lot of amazing logos, but we have a lot of, we have very fewer people who actually are making us a better company and making us a better product and are supporting and feeding the community. And you guys are in the forefront of that. So thank you to Sophie's Cube and thank you to you to uh, uh, host us. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, it takes us everywhere, man. Not a problem. Thank you guys. Thank you.